Bob, quit yanking over there. Good evening, everyone. All right, we'll uh, try to call the Wednesday, April the 4th Dr. Cog board work session to order. Uh, the normal chairman has absconded on work basis to another state, so he's not here. Uh, at this point, Ms. Garcia, would you take the roll, please? Eva Henry, Steve Odoricio, Jeff Baker, Bill Holan, Elise Jones, Deb Gardner, David Beacom, Randy Wheelock, Sean Wood, Chrissy Fanganello, Anthony Graves, Kevin Flynn, Roger Partridge, Ron Engels, Libby Zabo, Tina Francone, Bob Pfeiffer, John Marriott, Bob Roth, Larry Vidham, David Spellman, Aaron Brockett, Ann Justin, Lynn Baca, Matt Johnston, Roger Hudson, Ben Price, George Teal, Jason Bauer, Tammy Maurer, Here. Catherine Heider, Laura Christman, Here. Richard Champion, Gail Christie, Rick Teeter, Here. Debbie Nasta, Catherine Whitman, Steve Conklin, Here. Linda Olson, Jeff Deacon, Mark Gruber, Daniel Dick, Present. Drew Peterson, Bobby Sindelar, Lisa Jones, Laura Brown, Lynette Kelsey, Henry Ergon, Scott Norquist, Storm Glore, Jim Dale, Here. Ron Rakowski, George Lance, Mike Hillman, Stephanie Walton, Hello. Dana Goodwine, Jacob LeBure, Jerry Bean, Isaac Levy, Karina Elrod, Kyle Schlachter, Jacob Lofgren, Larry Straw. Here. Jacob, is that you on the phone? Yep. Okay. Winshawn, Winshaw, Joan Peck, Here. Ashley Stolzman. Here. Connie Sullivan, Dan Greenberg, Colleen Whitlow, Joyce Palazuski, Deborah Jerome, Sean Forey, Chris Larson, Jordan Sowers, Julie Mullica, John Dyack, Sally Daigle, Roberta Mooney, Rita Dozal, Here. Jessica Sandgren, Jackie Phillips, Herb Atchison, Here. Bud Starker, Adam Zarin, Deborah Perkins Smith, Bill Van Meter. In the attachment zone, attachment A, you will find a summary of the items that were discussed at the last meeting for your benefit. And then moving on to the public comment period, the chair requests that there be no public comment on issues for which a public meeting has prior, prior public meeting has been held before the board of directors. Is there anyone here who has any items that they'd like to bring forward for a public comment? You have up to three minutes. Go on to the next one. Next item up, Mr. Papsdorf, if you will, please. This will be attachment B, folks, if you're looking at your package. Good afternoon, everybody. The mic on? Good. The green light. Yep. Good afternoon. I'm Ron Papsdorf. I'm the Director of Transportation Planning and Operations here at Dr. Cog. Thank you. Uh, for those of ha I haven't had a chance to meet yet in this new role, I'm about two and a half weeks into the position, trying very desperately hard to fill lar very large shoes left by our friend Doug Rex. <laughs> That's an indication he has big feet. <laughs> Uh, so this first item, uh, you'll remember that back on March 21st of the Dr. Cog Board, uh, we discussed the regional share evaluation criteria. Uh, would like to thank you and your staff for getting us to this point. Uh, we've made a lot of progress uh, on getting to this, to this point on establishing the criteria for the regional share of this next TIP cycle. Again, that represents about 20% of the total that will be available this next TIP cycle. Uh, based on your input, we believe we're ready to move the regional share, cr share criteria through the final approval process uh, and prepare for the regional call for projects later this summer. Um, as an outcome of the discussion back on March 21st, uh, we heard some feedback um, uh, about a couple of items. Uh, we subsequently went back to the TIP policy work group um, to talk about 
the issue of exploring increasing the weighting factor uh, beyond 20% for part two, and that's the, that's the consistency, consistency and contributions to the transportation-focused Metro Vision objectives. The TIP policy work group met on March 26th. They discussed that item uh, of weighting, but also a couple of other minor adjustments as well that are reflected in the uh, final draft review cr criteria that was in your packet. Um, as far as the weighting criteria, I think the TIP policy work group really kind of felt like the weighting was correct at that point for that section of the criteria. And the reasoning went along the lines that um, while that's 20% of the total criteria, when you, uh, when you combine that with the proposed weighting for the TIP focus areas uh, and the Metro Vision objectives are combined, that really totals 50% of the total uh, scoring for the regional share criteria. So the policy, the TIP policy work group felt like that was meeting the objective of making sure that the real focus of the regional projects would be on implementing uh, the Metro Vision uh, criteria. In addition to that, uh, the policy work group agreed that applicants should be requested to list out each funding partner when they're talking about the partnerships, their contribution amount, and the percent of the overall total of the project cost. Uh, they also talked about, uh, they recommended listening, listing partnerships and, as examples uh, to emphasize and strengthen the collaboration and cooperation uh, for projects. Um, and then uh, finally to expand the section title uh, of part 2B to expand uh, to emphasize the connection to Metro Vision of those tip focus, those tip focus areas and really clearly tie that back to uh, Metro Vision. Um, with that discussion, I'd, I'd entertain any questions or comments uh, you have tonight. Our intent is to finalize this and bring it forward through the approval process uh, at, the 18th, at the April 18th uh, board meeting for action. Okay. Any comments or questions from any of the directors? Mr. Brockett. Thank you for that. Um, so I, I was one of the ones who raised the question about the percent that was assigned to the MetroVision objectives and the weighting criteria. And I appreciate the TIP policy working group's point about the adding up 50% between the focus areas and the MetroVision objectives. But I feel like, um, and I think that's a good point, um, but I feel like the, you know, the focus areas are what we're focusing on in these next few years, but the MetroVision objectives are what we're focusing on for the long term, for decades. And it seems to me like we'd be better off switching the weighting between those two so that we could do 20% on the focus areas, which are for this, this section, and 30% on our long-term MetroVision objectives. So I'd like to put that out there as a suggestion. Comments or questions from the body? Any response from staff on the Mr. Brockett's comments? Mr. Rex or Mr. Pop? Huh? Okay, hang on just a second at least. Any comment? Either one of you. You can toss a coin if you want. Everybody's very excited about this, I can tell. Yes. <laughs> well, I think the only comment I'd make, um, you know, is that, you know, it, as is indicated, I mean, these, the focus areas are MetroVision objectives, um, and it is those. MetroVision objectives that the board wanted to focus on. So I think that's why they were weighted heavier than the other focus area or the other MetroVision objectives. Um, I mean, you know, ultimately it's your decision, of course, but, um, but that, I mean, I think that was the reasoning behind it because they were, were ones that we chose as focus. Mr. Brockett, do you want to continue with the conversation? Well, I, um, I guess I'd, uh, maybe if we can get more information about how projects would be judged on the both the focus areas and the objectives so like if they would be if it really is just objectives that we're pulling out and we would be evaluating the same way we would other metro vision objectives um, that's more compelling so it, it, if we could learn more about how how those would be applied that would be helpful okay. miss jones well, I actually like Director Brackett's idea, and I was um, I was wondering as I was reading the packet today, the Metro Vision actually has performance targets, and that's I think we want to continue to be data driven and get the biggest bang for our buck, and so having actual measurements for whether or not something is moving our our Metro Vision forward. The Metro Vision piece actually has metrics that are measurable and that you can tag your quantitative data to. And so 
I agree that if I were going to uh, choose to favor um, one block over the other, the Metro Vision would be, I think, where I would put a few more the percentage points uh, at a minimum match them. Ms. Walton. I would agree with the um, weighting suggestion, um, and I prefer to be a little more data driven as well. The my impression as we are t we're talking about the tip focus areas is that they were a bit of um, I don't know for lack of a better word kind of bonus points or icing on the cake that it was sort of the thing that would that would maybe push a project over versus being the the meat of it so I would agree with maybe waiting it yeah, as you're suggesting Ms. Shaw thank you I I actually think that um, the, the waiting as we have it might work better because it allows us each tip cycle to look at the priorities that we see that, that are happening <coughs> excuse me, today as opposed to um, you know, the overarching which are always going to be there and, and are certainly important including you know, the measurements, the, the air quality, the, all of that. But if we see priorities, this is our real only way for putting the focus on, say, safety and reliability of the transportation as opposed to simply moving traffic, um, which may or may not have um, specifically to do with safety or reliability. So I'd... I'd like to see it stay the way we have it. Mr. Conklin, I'm not sure if I saw your hand or just a head nod. <laughs> kind of both. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I think I would advocate keeping it as is as well. Uh, this body at the, the board workshop that we had last summer set those focus areas and I think we did that for a reason and I think they stand out being weighted somewhat higher uh, whereas they become tertiary or secondary if if they drop below the, the other. And, and again, both of them are tied into MetroVision, but the, the focus areas that this group designated, I think, deserve that higher recognition. Mr. Dyack. Me? I don't think I raised my hand, but I'll talk. Hey, Connie said you raised your hand. You raised your hand, bro. Oh, uh, Colleen uh, lost, Connie. I'm sorry. To be the bearer of bad news. but uh, Mr. Roth. No, no, I'll, I'll well, talk. Now you want to talk. <laughs> I'll talk. If, if pressed, I will make this happen. So uh, to me, uh, the, the Metro Vision objectives, we're, we have objective two, three, where's one? We have 6A. So I, you know, I, I think our conversation that we had uh, on the focus areas was that we're probably not going to, a regional project's probably not going to address all three. We would strongly hope that they would uh, get one, if not two, but all three might be something that, that may or may not happen. Um, and we did talk about it. So I, I'm, I'm okay with the higher weighting, but still the, the Metro Vision objectives, I would probably need some direction as to, did, did we talk about these and did we sort of say these are the specific ones? If so, should we, should we rank them? Should we have further discussion? And I, I, I don't know where these sort of came from relative to the ones we discussed with the higher weighting, so. Mr. Rex. I think I understand the question. I, um, well, they're, they're within MetroVision. These yeah. are the transportation related. But there are other objectives objectives. Metro Vision, and That's objectives within MetroVision. And to me, correct. why are these in this? Did, did, the, did the TIP work group sort of vet this out? They did. Um, and they're the ones recommending that these are the only ones that we should take a look at. These were the, you're right, okay. these were the ones that we, we believe were related to the tra transportation function right. um, that should be included, yeah. yeah. No. So with, with, with that being said, um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to accept that. Uh, I think the board uh, talked about the tip focus areas. I'm happy to accept these. Uh, the weightings, I'm sure, was discussed. I'm happy to accept that as well. Mr. Roth? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Director Shaw actually must have read my notes, um, so I'm not going to be redundant other than to say that I support the recommendations of the TIP working group as well. Ms. Dozell. 
I support the way it is here because of speaking from a small town, uh, we will be focused on the two B areas, and they will carry more weight for us as a small community than two C, which is basically focused on urban and keeping residential and urban. And I know we're all kind of connected, and, and even in Superior, we're considered urban. But for us, when we look at projects from a Superior's point of view, we're going to want to have our projects, n not want, our projects will be more focused and more impacted by 2B, and therefore I'd like the weighting to be higher at that, uh, in 2B than 2C. Any other comments from any members of the authority? All right, I have two recommendations. One is basically to modify the scoring capabilities as, as defined in that particular section. And I also have one that says leave it the way it is currently recommended in the staff package. And we don't typically vote, but in order to move this forward, since this is scheduled for the next board meeting, which a vote will be taken, how many are in favor of changing the evaluation criteria prior to moving it forward to the board. Please do that by show of hands. I know I've got at least two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, I have four. Those in favor of leaving it as a staff recommendation to move forward to the board, please raise your hand. Okay, we'll move it forward as a staff recommendation. Is there any other comments before we close this item? Seeing none, we'll move forward. Mr. Papsdorf, thank you very much. You may now move on to item C. All right, good afternoon again. Still. I, I thought that would be the easier one. I appreciate all the comments on the, on the criteria. Uh, we did want to have this conversation about then based on the criteria and as applications come in, um, the actual how will we review the uh, regional share applications. Um, the TIP Policy Work Group discussed this at their March 26th meeting as well. Uh, we've put this proposed process together based on that discussion and on previous board input uh, throughout this process. First and foremost, I want to say that kind of our overarching um, construct is that we want to make sure whatever process we come up with for reviewing the regional share applications that it's as impartial as possible that it's authentic that it's objective and it has integrity for the process so that as recommendations come forward through the through the review and approval process that you have confidence in the process that led to those recommendations uh, to that end uh, based on that again that conversation at the tip policy work group uh, and a staff discussion, we came up with uh, this idea for the, approval, the review and approval process for the regional share application projects. Um, the review process really consists of sort of an eligibility review, an initial uh, scoring process, review and recommendations, and then working through the approval process. So I'm not going to ask you to look at that in a lot of detail because I'm going I'm to jump ahead and try to uh, talk through each of those sections separately. So first, um, on the applications as they come in, uh, the regional share applications are submitted by, the sub, by each of the subregions, uh, by CDOT and by RTD. Those will come in to Dr. Cog. Dr. Cog uh, staff will do an initial eligibility review to make sure that each of the applications actually meets the eligibility criteria for those regional share projects. Um, we envision a sort of parallel scoring process uh, where uh, a review panel will score the regional significance section of the project applications, and Dr. Cog staff would score the focus areas, the metro vision objectives, and the leveraging sections of the regional share criteria. Uh, the next step would be that we would, uh, the scores would be combined, presented to that review panel. Uh, the review panel would discuss the projects and the scoring and identify a top tier of projects based on the criteria that you all will have adopted. Uh, the project sponsors for those top tier projects would be invited to present to the review panel their projects. Uh, and then the review panel would prepare 
um, a, a recommendation that would go to the Transportation Advisory Committee for their consideration and ultimately through the approval process, review process and approval process through the Regional Transportation Committee and the Board. So before I move on, are there general questions about this overall structure of the process? Ms. Smith? Could you talk a little bit about um, the review panel? Like, not specific people, but what, what were your thoughts about that? That's, that's, my, that's my next, I'm gonna, I'm gonna launch into that. I just want, I wanted to, I did wanna talk about the process first and see if, see if we're okay generally with the concept of this, of this review process generally before I get into the review panel because I think that is a significant question. Okay, is everyone okay with this step so far? Okay. All right, Go ahead. moving on. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So there are a number of different options available to us if we think about this review panel and um, the TIP policy work group had a pretty extensive conversation um, about this issue and, and to be honest with you, there are a lot of different ideas and I think uh, first and foremost I would emphasize there's probably no truly right answer here. I think it's what the board is going to be comfortable with and uh, relating back to sort of those objectives for this being kind of objective uh, authentic, sort of trying to make sure that there aren't a lot of um, uh, kind of biases in that, in that overall process might help us talk about and decide on sort of the construct of the review panel. So we talked about sort of using the Transportation Advisory Committee as this review panel. Um, obviously, there's a lot of pros about that. It's an existing structure that already exists. Every, everybody's at the table. We can tie that into their meeting schedule. Um, you know, some of the downsides are a lot of those folks around that table are going to be project sponsors and project applicants. And so, do you want do you want folks that sort of ultimately have uh, have submitted applications um, have have will have another bite at the apple in reviewing the recommendation and recommending something up through the approval process to kind of play this central role in this review process. Uh, the second option we talked about was the TIP policy work group, kind of a subset of the TAC. Um, I think some of, the, some of the comments that were made at the TIP policy work group that was that there's not a lot of small community sort of representation at the TIP policy work group and kind of has some of, the, some of the same pros and cons of using the Transportation Advisory Committee. Um, finally, we talked about the idea of having sort of a, uh, assembling an ad hoc committee of regional stakeholders uh, that might be economic development agencies or, or chambers of commerce from around the region, modal advocates, uh, from throughout the state of the region like uh, the Colorado Motor Carriers Association, CASTA, Move Colorado, Bicycle Colorado, there are many to choose from um, involving RAC in that. So kind of putting together this ad hoc group that's sort of outside of our normal process and might bring some, some objective new perspectives to the review of those applications and scoring and, and developing a recommendation for you all to consider. So with that, Mr. Chair, I, th I think I put a, a little bit of a, enough meat out there for you to, to chew on a little bit and uh, would happy to have a, have a discussion with you about your thoughts on, on those different options. Okay, I've got about three or four of you. Hang on just a minute. And just so everyone's aware, this, this last slide that Ron presented, the board officers were looking at this and we were just trying to brainstorm a little bit. As how do you find somebody that has no direct interest or no direct tie to any of the projects and we we're having a tough time coming up with an unbiased potential of who would this group be if it's economic development they're tied to every community if it's any of the outside groups they typically have a community tie or a regional tie of some level staff is tied to the municipalities or the counties that they represent as is in the tip and attack but we were having a tough time finding probably more than two people if they would even do it. We're not even sure they would be willing to do that, but just trying to identify potential. We're having a tough time from the board officers trying to figure something on, on a stakeholder in a regional area that's not going to be tied to one of these applications. Mr. Dyack, then Ms. Jones, and then Ms. Dozell. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, my thought at that earlier discussion was to sort of have each subcommittee uh, nominate or appoint one staff member. That way each, each uh, sub, sub region would have uh, equal representation. Um, they're more intimately involved, so it would probably be a subset of the TIP policy work group. 
but they would sort of know the intent. They, I think they would have a good understanding on um, how to score this. And ultimately, it's going through three or four different other machinations. And it comes back to the board. So at least in this first go round, I, I think that's probably something to consider. Ms. Jones. Well, I guess referencing my earlier comment, I think this is your opportunity to really bring subject matter expertise that's not sitting around this table now to take a look at this with a fresh set of eyes. Um, and while I think everybody, you know, it should be people from the region so that they have some idea of what is regionally significant for the metro area, um, I think it's possible to at least have them not be employed directly by one of the local governments that's submitting a project. So at least hopefully they can bring a regional perspective to this. So while well, I, I think we'd have to do some thinking about who those individuals are, I think you know we already know uh, you know what our jurisdictions think. We'll have the Dr. Cog staff expertise brought to the table. This is the opportunity to bring outside perspectives on what the rest of the world thinks is regionally significant based on their expertise around transportation and mobility. So that's where I would lean. Okay. Ms. Dozell. Well, first of all, it's not a beauty pageant. Mm -hmm. You know, so we don't need people that are objective, you know, never seen the, the candidate before and score them based on something, you know, without having prior knowledge of them. I think uh, that this body is meant to actually spend the money in the best way that we can collectively. So I think that's our, our requirement. Our commitment is to come together and spend the money the best way we can for the entire Denver regional uh, area, Denver metro regional area. So uh, I think we should do it. And I like the idea of a person selected from each sub-regional, that's a good idea. We should be responsible for spending this money well. And I think if we bring other people in that haven't been part of this process, like we have twice a month or four times a month or you know, for four years or even two months, I don't care how long you've been here, but we've come here with the idea that we want to do the best thing that we can to spend the money. And I think if we bring people in that haven't been seeped in all of this, then what we end up with is a patchwork quilt and not a tapestry. And I think we need to be focused on creating a better tapestry of how we do transportation here. So I think it's our responsibility to figure this out. And I wouldn't want to put it off on somebody else and, and then be upset about it. You know, I think let's be upset together <laughs> and, then, and then come together and then work forward together. Other comments? Ms. Christman. Um, with a regional stakeholder, I think the key word is stakeholder, I think it's very hard for us to ascertain what someone's interests and conflicts may be. Um, and this is so important to all of us. Uh, when we create a, whatever group we create that ultimately is um, members of our, our own group here, and then at least we understand what somebody's biases are. And we know what the conflicts are. And people, you know, if they're voting uh, with a bias or conflict, we can identify that. We can't do that uh, with regional stakeholders. Other comments? Ms. Peck? I agree with you. Um, Laura. Laura. <laughs> Um, the other thing when you're mentioning economic development groups, etc., they are going to be influenced by the stakeholders in their town anyway, especially if they don't understand the whole concept of what we're trying to do. They're going to go to their councils, to their mayors, to, to uh, their transportation directors to get some kind of a, a, an idea of what the city wants or what that region wants. So rather than in trying to engage them and bring them up to speed, I think we go with, with this body. I thought that was a good idea. So that's my comment. Okay. Others? Mr. Partridge? 
I just make a comment on the uh, if we get economic development groups in there because many of these groups there's a fee to join them. Some jurisdictions may not, but anytime there's a fee, I think now we get a little bit of problem. I certainly like the idea. I think about the subregion that is mentioned. I like uh, uh, Rita's comments too. I think we're on the right way. But just regarding economic development groups, there's a fee involved many times, so that, that challenges us. Mr. Brockett. I'll agree with Director <clears throat> Partridge and other people have expressed concerns about the regional stakeholder idea. Um, but I, I do think, you know, obviously the, this will eventually come to us for a decision, but I do think there's a role for um, technical folks in, uh, in an earlier stage in the process cause, um, to vet uh, the projects. And I know Dr. Cog's staff will be doing the initial scoring, but I think it would be helpful to have some subject matter expertise in between before it makes its way to this board. So let, let me just make sure that we're still understanding that, that everything that's, if you go back before the review panel, you've had the TAC, the sponsors have been there, the scoring has been done, the TIP policy group has looked at it, and you have the staff recommendation. So you've got your, what I'm going to say, you have your experts that have already reviewed these as a part of the review process. And if, so I think from that standpoint, those groups, but now, not every municipality or county has a person sitting on those groups. So there's some limitation as to the fact there's not 58 groups represented. But as uh, Mr. Brockett and Mr. Uh, Dyack indicated, final decision comes back here no matter what. So the question is, is there's basically been what I picked up on is three com concepts that you've talked about. One is to do one per region. One is to get a fresh set of eyes from a regional basis. And the third was to stay with the responsibility at the board. Is there another one? Is there any consensus of the three of which you would prefer to have, since there's only three that's on the table right now? Ms. Jones. I guess I'm a little bit confused. The folks that's, that were advocating for us deciding, we, we are going to decide. So for us to make an initial determination of regional significance along with Dr. Cog's staff and then have it come back to us seems redundant. So it's, I think at a minimum, I hope we're not suggesting that there be another layer where the Dr. Cog board sits and, and reviews projects for regional significance then turns around and decides the same thing. That doesn't make sense. So at a minimum, if I hope when people say keep it with us that they're talking about TAC or the TIP working group. So just clarification on the folks that have sp spoken to that. Mr. Ozell, then Ms. Walton. Yes, I was going to ask you to bring up that slide there. So what are we, we're, we're looking at that review, well, which box are we trying to fill? Because we've talked about approvals from those three center boxes. Uh, but we're also saying that go back of those, one. which, go back one. <laughs> Yeah, the slide before. There you go. There you go. Can everyone see that? Thank you. Yeah. So, Mr. Chair, Director Dozal, uh, um, I, I think that the concept was that the the scoring piece, that parallel scoring process, the the review of the regional significance section of the applications would be, would be done by this review panel. However, that review panel is um, is convened. The red the, squared box under the two boxes <laughs> under the score under scoring there right the top box underscoring and then the the bottom box underscoring that would okay. be the dr cog staff would review the other uh, the other three criteria sections of the applications the focus the tip focus areas the metro vision objectives uh, and the leveraging sections those scores that happen in parallel would then be combined and brought to brought to the review panel so the review panel members could see sort of the combined score and really kind of talk through all aspects of each of the projects, identify a top tier of projects, invite the sponsors of those top tier projects to present to the review panel to help them make a recommendation. The recommendation then would go through the normal approval process through the TAC, through the RTC, and to the board. Um, I, I, I'm wondering, Mr. Chair, if, you know, I'm, I'm hearing a, a lot of different ideas of maybe there's a combination here for, con for constructing the review panel. Because um, so I think if each of the subregions were to sort of appoint a member to the review panel and then 
understand some of the concerns about sort of the economic development agencies or chambers and sort of the, some of the bias that they might bring, but maybe some of the um, kind of regional modal kind of interest groups or stakeholders might have a role and give, give you that sort of independent outside viewpoint, maybe less biases about sort of regional choices, but still enough understanding about the transportation needs um, around the region. And maybe that combined group is then large enough that any inherent biases are sort of diluted a little bit. So I think the larger the group becomes, the less those individual biases start to matter. And so maybe there's a little bit of a melding of concepts here. Okay. Let me catch a couple of you up. Uh, Rita, are you done? No, I, I'm, the review panel's up there twice. And that's why I'm sitting there. Or is it the same review panel, but they get involved twice? And see, and that's why I think we're just getting way too complicated here for for this and and then we go over and then the TAC gets involved again which they might have been part of possibly the review panel or maybe not or maybe people from the TAC are on the review panel I just think this is a very complicated diagram for what we need to do what we need to do is score them we need to take have somebody take a look at them and then recommend them that's it but I think I've got four extra steps here that I don't think we need to have Ms. Walton, I got you up next. You're good. Ms. Peck? Yeah. Yeah, Thank you. Um, to address Director Jones' uh, comment about having Dr. Cog review it twice, um, on all of these sub-regional uh, groups, is there a Dr. Cog member on each sub-regional group, at least one? Because that might address both issues. If the person on the sub-regional group that is uh, put on the panel is actually a Dr. Cog member as well, then that that would address having the Dr. Cog people do it, and but not involving the whole group twice. Does that, am I making sense? Yeah, in, in trying to the recommendation to these groups that's going out to the regional sub-regional is that Correct. the Dr. Cog representation of every sub-regional member and the regional member, between the county and the municipalities, that that Dr. Cog rep is the one that's in that group. Right. So it, to your point, if everybody follows that scenario of what's being proposed by Dr. Cog when it goes out to the TIP working groups, is that if you follow that, your Cog representative is already on, the, is already on that group. On the group, but, right. but I am suggesting if we're going to say that the group um, uh, put somebody on the review panel, could that person not be the Dr. Cog person in the sub-regional group? Could be a staff person. Or a staff person. Yeah. A staff person. Ms. Smith, go ahead. So I don't want to go back to the, so let me preface this by saying I don't want to go back to the old way of doing things, but can you read? refresh my memory as to who actually evaluated the applications in the past? Staff. So well, sta staff did the entire process and then it came to the TAC, to the TAC, the RTC, and the board. Correct. Right? So in the past we felt, we may or may not have felt comfortable with staff doing the whole thing and then bringing it forward. Hey, Ms. Jones. I guess I want to just bring a dose of reality here. What we're talking about is a regional a review panel that would look at the regional significance, looking at applications and, and the quantitative data backing the regional significance. And I would suggest that as smart and wonderful as all of this group is, we are not transportation uh, geeks, right? We are not going to want to go dive, do a deep dive into the modeling regarding the numbers around regional significance. So at a minimum, we're going to want that to be a subject matter experts, at least one of our staff people. And I guess I, I think that maybe um, you're headed in the right direction with your hybrid idea of if there's concern that TAC doesn't have representation from I think it has from all geographic regions, but maybe not all community sizes, having a staff person from each subregion nominated to a group, and then having a couple of subject matter experts with a regional 
um, perspective to add the, to those voices. That would make sense in my mind to have people with technical expertise on what would actually make a difference to mobility in the region. So again, I, I think we need to remind ourselves that we're not going to want to be the ones doing the quantitative modeling analysis. We're going to want staff to do that and people that have significant backgrounds in that kind of that quantitative analysis. Ms. Dolzman. Thank you very much. I, uh, I think a lot of these suggestions have merit and I can support many of them actually, um, but I'd like to propose that we ask Dr. Cog's staff to just take over scoring of the entire first section and then pass it to TAC and then RTC and then it would come to the whole board for discussion. I think the Dr. Cog staff um, does a nice job of understanding that we come from a lot of different perspectives and I think they understand what we're talking about when we talk about regional significance and it's a big task but I think that they are up to it to be able to score that appropriately and take all of our different perspectives into account. Mr. Dyack. Uh, to clarify, the, my, my original uh, thought was to have a, a staff person, one that has technical expertise, not a Dr. Cog board member, uh, if selected by the subregion, to sit on the uh, review panel. Um, you know, I, I kind of view sort of the uh, Dr. Cox staff and review panel as sort of an assurance type of uh, situation. In the past, um, uh, I think the past tip cycle, it, it sort of devolved into more of a confrontational thing uh, between uh, board and staff, or at least that it appeared that way to me. I don't, I don't want to be um, on the opposite side of the table with Dr. Cox staff. So to me, to have the review panel would sort of give that, that era of um, Dr. Cox staff not telling us which projects they think are appropriate. So to me, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to, to include the review panel with, with the, the sub-regional um, staff person, but again, to Director Stoltzman, if we feel comfortable enough, there's enough, there's enough people and boards uh, along this chain that I feel comfortable just having Dr. Cog staff score it, but I think over time there's going to be questions and concerns, so to me I'll put that out there. Mr. Ozell. So back to your idea or your proposal, John, that where you said a person is selected by each sub-region to sit on the review panel. I like that idea. You know, I, I don't want to lose that. I don't think we've lost it here, have we? But I like that idea, because it's only eight, isn't it? Right? Yep. So that's not an overwhelmingly large committee. I mean, it can be handled and managed, eight people. So I think the review panel, if we want to just focus in on that, review panel should be a person selected by the, each sub-region and then the appropriate Dr. T Cog staff. Let's let's make her, let's say it region because that includes all the subregions. That way you'd have eight if that's what you're talking about, Rita. But if we go down to the subregion, we got 58. No, I said subregion for this subregional is eight. There's eight county subregional tip. A representative from each subregion. A representative okay. from each subregional. This process we're talking about, we're creating, we're bringing forth projects for the region, regional projects, mm -hmm. that are coming out of the sub-region. There's eight of them. So eight sub-regions are going to present up to three projects each, and then a member selected by that sub-region team will rep represent their sub-region and their projects on this review panel. Okay. Keep in mind, you have to include Dr. Cog, RTD, and CDOT because they all have can submit projects. Yeah, I, I think I said that. Eight plus the Dr. Cog staff and CDOT and whoever else, yep. RTD. Okay. Ms. Wynn? Thank you. I, I, I guess I just wanted to, to, to re-examine the scoring and make sure that I, I'm fully on board with that style of, of review panel, someone from each of the eight groups. Um, but it, the way it's depicted here is that that same group would determine regional significance and Dr. Cog would score on the focus areas 
um, the uh, Metro Vision objectives and the leveraging. And I just, uh, so are we okay to, to let Dr. Cog do all of the scoring and then the review panel comes in? I think I'd like that. Okay, Ms. Smith. So I have a question and then may have a comment. Um, so on the over to the recommendations when you have the review panel. So under that the tiering presentations recommendations. So am I correct in my understanding that coming out of the scoring that there's a tiering and that only the top tier would give presentations or all giving presentations? Ron, um, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, our, 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 we envisioned that only those kind of top tier projects and they, you know, they might, they might represent 150 to 200 percent of the total amount available um, of funding so that we're really focusing the energy on really honing in on kind of the, the, the most competitive projects and inviting those project sponsors to, to present those projects to uh, the review panel to help the review panel make their final, uh, final determinations and recommendations. Um, to attack and the the whole the whole point was the regional share is a is really a small portion of the total amount in the tip call and we we didn't feel like it was worth the time that it was effective to have every project sponsor for all of the regional applications to come in and do a full blown presentation on the project let's focus that effort on sort of the that top tier of of projects from that come out from the scoring okay thank you for that clarification. So, um, Ron, kind of piggybacking on that, and I have to agree with some of the previous members that said, boy, this seems like a big process when you just said to me it's a small amount of dollars, and so why have everyone go, go to all this angst? So I'm just wondering, I'm going back to, which is why I asked the first question, who did it previously? I'm going back to, I wonder what, if the, if Dr. Cog's staff could do the whole thing that says scoring there and then whatever you want to call whoever makes up that review panel it's non Dr. Cog staff so there's a chance there for the board to have some input and to do it at at that point so it's just a proposed suggestion I, I was curious um, maybe why Doc, so I assume this came forward from Dr. Cog that um, staff that in terms of the scoring there must be a reason that you thought, okay, Dr. Cog's staff could do the technical part, but someone else should do the regional. And I'm just curious what that thought process is, because I would feel comfortable of Dr. Cog doing both pieces. Uh, sure, Mr. Chair. I, th I think the the idea was that um, if, based on some previous comments from the board and this interest in sort of having an outside review panel assist in scoring applications, and, and maybe that was in the context of previous tips where we didn't have the regional and sub-regional share, um, but I think the idea was that if you're going to have a review panel that consists of some outside folks, some outside stakeholders, that giving them the uh, the regionally significant, the regional significance portion of the applications first um, we thought that was an appropriate place for them to start, but two, that would give them some familiarity with the projects so that when they saw the combined score with the, with the technical aspect, the more technical aspects, the Metro Vision objectives, the focus areas and leveraging, that then as they sort of convened and, and viewed the whole of the projects, they, they would have gotten some familiarity with the projects and understood sort of how they fit within the region uh, from their review of the regional significance. So that was, that was kind of the thought process of why we went through that parallel. If we're going to have a review panel, we wanted to set that review panel up the best we could to have it be successful. So thank you for that explanation. Um, I would like to propose you know, something else, if you're making a list just for consideration, is that the scoring be all done by Dr. Cog's staff and that the review panel be one of these other things. And I'm, I'm not sure um, that I feel strongly about what is embodied in that review panel yet. I haven't really thought that through, but um, in my mind it would be simpler to do that. And I think, Ron, to your point, I understand what you're saying in terms of that group understanding the regional significance. Um, I think that Dr. Cog's staff could really help 
share their thoughts on that to whoever the review panel is and why they thought the way they did in terms of the regional significance. So those right, are my comments. Make sure I haven't missed anybody. I've got Mr. Partridge, Mr. Brockett, Ms. Swelton, Mr. Conklin, Mr. Graves, and Mr. Ross in the queue so far. So Mr. Partridge, you're up next. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I like what Deborah was saying there, and I'm just going to back up a little bit to, for a question first. So under Part 2, which is the applicant, there is a, it's a quantitative, that's a objective number that, that's my question, it is a, an objective number that the applicant puts down under Part 2? So under each question under Part 2, it goes uh, the B part of each question has a quantitative benefit. Is that a true numerical number? Ron, you got an answer? Mr. Well, Chair, well, Director well, Partridge, well, you know, I, I think it's a, it's a combination. And, and, and remember, if you'll harken back to previous conversations that the board has had and the TIP policy work group has had about the regional process, we wanted to make it a little bit more um, qualitative in the review and not all just hard numbers so there it's it's a bit of a mix I think in the cr the way the criteria are structured so that we can consider not only sort of that quantifiable hard number down to three decimal points but can also consider some of the qualitative aspects as they relate to the Metro Vision objectives okay and then well I, I just might follow up on that real quick and Ron is exactly right but I, okay. so just a, yeah, right. Just a scenario, right? I mean, I think it's one of these, we talked about, you know, using it, you know, in context, right? Be able to provide that context that really we haven't been able to do before, right, in the way we score projects. So, for example, in, in the qualitative portion of, let's say, you know, 2B3, which is um, the focus area improved transportation safety and security, right? So in your, in your application, when you're submitting a project, you suggest in your qualitative narrative that your project is going to improve safety by X percent. The, um, this, this quantitative benefits section, would, you would be required to provide that evidence to support that claim. So, and we provide metrics within the worksheets to be able to do that. And then once you provide that, that, that evidence, then we will first score those projects individually based on high, medium, low, and then we actually then score those projects in comparison to other, the other projects yeah. by each okay. each individual category. So we'll have this huge huge matrix of um, you know how each project scores relative to each other based on each individual thing. Okay. Um, and, and apply the weighting. And apply the weighting of course. Right. And so then underscoring is that both quantitative and qualitative by doc, let's say it's Dr. Cogstaff that's both quantitative and qualitative also? Yes. Okay. The, the scoring of that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, yeah, be, yeah, there would be a numerical value assigned okay. ultimately. So I'm going to kind of wrap it up for me just thinking in the application process, each application through the directors and their staff has that opportunity and through really the whole sub-region has that opportunity to present qualitative, quantitative. So that's the applicant. I like the idea under scoring that we leave out the review panel, that it just is Dr. Cogstaff looking at that as a whole. And then when it moves the review panel, if the review panel is made up of subject matter experts, probably non-directors from each of the subregion, you have an opportunity to circle back to the application that you put in, but it's already gone through Dr. Cog's staff. I like that idea, so I'll just present it, at least in my thinking, that way. Okay, Mr. Brockett. Yeah, I was going to say almost exactly the same thing. So, yeah, <laughs> piggyback you guys, on. You guys work great together. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I, I think maybe we're headed in a direction that the board could support, and I'll just throw out one uh, additional option. Maybe there's a couple of um, subject matter experts who are not from the subregions. Maybe if we if we have some other ones. Uh, maybe a couple others. I'll just leave that maybe to Dr. Cog to think about um, and maybe bring it back to the full board or not. But it seems like we're moving in a good direction. Ms. Walton. Um, I just wanted to ask a clarifying question then. Your suggestion about the review panel, who would be the members of the review panel in your 
suggestion? Through the subregion, each subregion comes up with a subject matter expert, non-director, is what I'm suggesting. I kind of like Aaron's idea that maybe there's a few other subject matter experts that aren't uh, not are not staff mm -hmm. of each jurisdiction. I kind of mm -hmm. like that idea too. Right. Oh, thank you. Um, so, just to throw out some other things, maybe for consideration. Um, I appreciate that we're maybe coming to some consensus, but a couple of things keep popping in my head that I just wanted to um, mention. Um, one thing that I'm wondering about is the I'm not as familiar with the Transportation Advisory Committee, and I'm wondering, um, not interested in complicating or uh, drawing out the process anymore because I do agree that with the amount of money it doesn't need to necessarily be overly complicated, but I'm wondering if there is an opportunity to bring some fresh eyes on some of this at some point and if there are citizen review boards um, that would be likened to a subject matter expert or is, you know, in discussing these topics on a regular basis, but that are a little further removed and maybe a little more independent at some point in the process if that feels like the right thing. So I'm curious about anybody's thoughts on that. And for including subject matter experts, um, I, I'm tending to agree on um, trusting the staff really to do that scoring and um, and then a different review panel. But I'm wondering if, there, if we're missing out on not having Dr. Cog members um, being witness to some of those presentations. So. Okay. so we'd be, I'm hearing in my ear, they'd, they'd be, be there. But I thought that would be the review panel. But they're just, they're not the deciders. They're, they're there, though. They'd be part of it. Oh, I see. Okay. So invited to attend, and add perhaps. Yeah. yeah, we could. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a great point. We could do some kind of joint meeting. I mean, they're all pu public meetings, of course, anyway, but, you know, we could do some joint meeting of the board and the panel so everybody could hear those presentations. <laughs> Good luck with that. Your words, not mine. <laughs> Mr. Conk, oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Walton, are you okay if we move on to another comment? Yes, thank you. All right, Mr. Conklin. I, I heard something that I think probably was unintentional, but I think it, to me, informs my thought about the review panel. And that was when we were talking about a representative from each of the subregions that they would represent their projects forward. And I think that's, a, to me, a fatal flaw with that review panel being composed of, of members of, of the subregions if it is envisioned as advocacy. And if, if there is in any sense that they are representing their project in that forum, uh, I think that opens it up to to who has the loudest voice and the biggest argument and the you know all the way down the line. So I would encourage that review panel to be as as um, agnostic as possible in terms of of that issue. And and if we have members of the subregion somehow build that so that they are clearly not there to advocate their projects and there to to fight the battle for theirs. And I think however we structure it, we need to to try to avoid that that perception and also that reality. Mr. Graves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, this has been really excellent discussion, and I, I think I'm also falling into this consensus, one about combining the scoring, leaving that to Dr. Cog staff, then under review, allowing each subregion designate one uh, staff member or somebody technical gets it. I appreciate the sense of objectivity. I think that's really important. I, I want to add uh, one additional consideration that actually broadens this process a little bit. One of the things that I've been wrangling with down at the sub-region level is who the, uh, the designated subject matter experts are who are sort of monitoring broader opportunity to connect the sub-regions. And so I think it might be great to take a couple of Dr. Cox staff members who are doing the regional scoring bucket and have them attend the regional subcommittee or regional, I can't even say, how many regionals, thank you, the sub-regional meetings to really be a champion for combining projects, elevating projects, right, looking for ways to uh, weave the tapestry that Director Dozell was talking about earlier. And so I think that would be a really nice segue or, or, or niche between the two. 
So, Mr. Graves, let me ask clarifying so I get it right in my own head. Yes. The group you're talking about, as I recall, we have Dr. Cog, RTD, CDOT, all on those sub-regional committees already. Are you, are you thinking about a Dr. Cog staff member other than the one that's already at the meeting? Uh, it can very well be potentially the one that's at the meeting, but nobody really has a dedicated purpose of looking for regional connection at the sub-region level. Okay. And so I really think it's critically important to have somebody who has that as their orientation who's attending these sub-regional meetings who can look for ways to connect the dots. Okay. Go ahead. No, I, I, I think I, I mean, I think it's a great point. You know, we've talked about at least I've thrown out the idea of having good Lord. I mean, nobody wants an extra meeting, but um, the chairpersons at each of those subregions that we would meet collectively to have a discussion about the subregional issues. But I think it, what you're speaking to is even taking that really a step further to even invite, um, you know, adjacent subregion maybe as chairs or someone who serves on that committee. To be, to ha you know, to be as, I, I mean, I, I guess not a formal member of that subregion, but to be there and available to have the discussion about the integration of, of possible projects. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah, we can work on that and work some of that language into the tip policy document. Okay, Mr. Roth. Two things, real quick. The first is I wanted to speak in favor of the idea of having a representative from each subregion, and then a handful of subject matter experts, whoever that is. Um, and then secondly, this may go without saying, but I'll say it anyway. Since some municipalities are in multiple subregions, it's important that we make sure that no municipality has uh, somebody, multiple people, um, you know, like we don't want Westminster to have one on a Adams and one on, on Jefferson, as an Why? example. I can be at two meetings. Actually, we don't want Westminster to be on any of them. There you go. <laughs> My former chair, buddy. <laughs> Ms. Dozell, help you in. My final comment is, and I know this sounds odd that it's my final comment, but I never intended that the sub-regional representative would only speak and advance their sub-regional project. What I meant is that that person could answer questions about it and how it would co connect with others. So once it gets to the review panel, you should kind of throw away ownership and, and the individual agendas and now say, okay, what's the good for Denver Regional Metro area? Well, how can we best spend this money collectively together? So, you know, once you get to here, you shouldn't be talking anymore about your particular town or area, except to answer a question that may be pertinent in the discussion. You're going to figure this out? <laughs> Thank you, sir, very much. No, I appreciate that comment. I, I think you are correct. I will suggest that um, when, if, when Dr. Cog does the scoring, we, we will not change that scoring. So that scoring that the, the, the panel will see will be the same scoring that the board will see. So any additional recommendations or something that comes out of the, the, the TIP policy, or sorry, the panel, um, will be in addition to the scoring as originally done by us. So you know what I mean? So that panel will justify their change, if there is a change, in that recommendation. So just full transparency so the board knows exactly how they were scored. Other comments at this point? Ms. Jones? Well, it feels like we are having an emerging consensus, and I just wanted to articulate that and ag agree with it, um, if I had it right, which is that let's keep it simple and have Dr. Cog staff do all the scoring, and that uh, we would have a review panel after that, which is composed of a s staff person from rep nominated from each subregion, as well as a handful of subject matter experts, and that Dr. Cog staff are going to make recommendations on the latter. Sounds good. Ms. Smith. Just a clarification that in addition to the subregions, Dr. Cog and R it's Dr. Cog, RTD and CDOT would be included on the review panel. That's my understanding, yes. Yeah. Ms. Christman. This is very simplistic, but please make sure you have an odd number 
<laughs> Great point. Okay. Let's see if we can get some agreements on some parts. Ms. Smith, you have another? I actually have a, I have a question. So, so a project's been submitted on for the regional pod, um, and it doesn't make it. It can be resubmitted in the sub-regional pod. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Stereo. Okay. Let's take it one part at a time. Mr. Dale. This, this helped me bear with me on this, and then it goes to the TAC, to R, RTC, and then what do those two, what do those folks say? Yes, no, great, thumbs up, thumbs. I'm, I'm, I'm a little uh, confused at what they're, those important folks are adding to the review panel. Well, I mean, I can, yeah, I can definitely answer that. It's, um, uh, well, yeah, I. I mean, it's definitely yes or no would be the answer. Yes. Yeah, so we would. So the technical advisory committee, which is our transportation advisory committee, transportation advisory committee. God, you think I'd know after four and a half years? I just referred to his tax so long. But um, so that's made up of technical staff, right? Primarily of of your of your jurisdictions. And um, so, so yes. So we'll, we will, and we've we've kept you know, the the TAC and our, and quite frankly RTC to a lesser degree. And, the, and you all, of course, apprised of how this new new model is is uh, transforming, right? So, so we will at the at the their next meetings, we'll talk to them about this whole process, so they have an understanding of that. But yes, ultimately, each well, the the TAC is a recommending body, right? So they will provide a recommendation, yes or no, that they agree with the list. Um, regardless of that, we will then share that information with RTC and the board. Um, hopefully, they 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 recommend approval of the of the the, the list of regional projects, and then RTC um, will then recommend projects to the full board. Now, it's different here than most areas with regards to what the purpose of RTC is. In order for any action, um, you know, related to a transportation initiative, right, within this region, an MPO related function, both RTC and the board have to have, have the same affirmative action. So if the RTC decides, no, we don't like these list of projects, we're not recommending them, and the board says, yeah, we like them, well, that's not going to work. It has to go back to RTC, and ultimately we decide on, on a list of projects. That's a little inside baseball on how our process works. But, um, but yeah, they're very important, all those important cogs in our process. Mr. Brockett. Can I just get clarification? So the, the TAC is advisory, and the RTC is an approval body? That's correct. Yeah. So the... the um, Diagram isn't structured that way right now, so you probably want to change it when you bring it back to the full board. Yeah, it, it, it's a good point. I mean, we, we, we list RTC as a recommending body, and they do ultimately, you know, their action they take is an actual recommendation to the board on an, on an item, but um, with the understanding that if this, that recommendation is not a, approved exactly as it's stated by the board, then it has to go back through again. Which I think counts as an approval body. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Mr. Flynn. Thank you, Doug. Could you clarify, could the board eliminate one and pass the others, or do we have to approve the recommendation from the, R, uh, from the uh, RTC, RTC yep, right. as it's presented? Correct. Right. Yes or no? Okay. Or, or Perfect. yeah, if you eliminate one, then it'd have to go back to RTC. Just that one? Yeah. Uh, or the whole thing? Or, the, the package minus that one project. Okay, thank you. But, uh, but I think the important part in the ultimate end, there has to be a unanimous agreement on the two sets, both from RTC and from the Dr. Cog board. It can't be a partial approval from either one. It's got to be unanimous across the board. All right, let's go back one step. Underscoring. We've had a lot of conversation back and forth, but what I'm hearing, it appears, I could be wrong, that a majority of the folks are uh, uh, comfortable with having the Dr. Cog staff take care of both blocks under scoring and then forward that on. Am I in agreement with the group? I see a whole lot of this. I don't see any of this. Okay, so for the time being, 
Ron, you own it. Yep. You and the rest of the group. Yes. All right, now under the review panel, we still have to get a decision, some kind of a way or another, of who's going to be on this review panel. Does anybody want to take a quick shot at what this? Elise, go ahead. I think we were reaching a, a consensus around each subregion would would nominate a representative, which would be a staff member from that jurisdiction. RTD and CDOT would have a place on the review panel, and then there'd be a, a quote handful of subject matter expertise uh, ec subject matter experts. And we had asked, I think Aaron had suggested having Dr. Cog staff suggest who those might be. Do we have any idea of how many that would be? A handful. At, okay, no, let's say no more than five. Can we limit? I'm trying to keep this down to a workable group. We're already up around 15. Right, I think you raised the question because you only have eight subregions. So I wouldn't think you'd want seven or less of all the others involved because I think have that ownership through the review panel being within Dr. Cog technical. So no more than five. Yes. Yeah. No more than five subject matter experts, but let's go back to the other comment. If you are in multiple districts, do you get one? And do you how do you make a decision on which district you're coming from when you're in multiple? Well, uh, yeah, that'd be up to the subregion to make that determination. Now, what I'm saying is, I'll, I'll use myself as an example. So I have Adams and Jefferson. Mm -hmm. Do I get to choose which one I come forward with as part of this review panel? So, I, I think the point was that the same staff person shouldn't be from from the single jurisdiction in two different subregions. Yeah. So each subregion would get to decide who their staff person would be. Mm -hmm. And just at the end of that process, he, they would, they can't all be from Westminster is the bottom line. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to go back to this. So, Bob, you've got three mm -hmm. that you have to deal with. So does he have three different staff members mm -hmm. or one staff member representing Aurora from all three subregions? No, what I would, what I would, what my suggestion is, is that, um, you know, in Adams County, as an example, they might have somebody that's a stronger candidate than any of the Aurora staff. I can't imagine that's the case. <laughs> right, right Matt Callison, that kid couldn't be the case. But um, they might have a stronger candidate in Adams County, but Arapahoe County is a perfect fit for uh, an Aurora staff member. So I think that that's one of those that there's got to be a little coordination. But I don't think the municipality would have the power to say, I want to be Adams County or Arapahoe County or Douglas, but that it's a, it's a, uh, it's a fit based on who else is recommended within that subregion. Yeah. Yeah. Ron? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I, I think my understanding of this concept is that each subregional forum as a group, and this will be your first, this may be sort of one of your first subregional forum tests of how well you work together, is to come up with a recommendation from you, the membership from that subregional forum on who you want to be your staff represent, representative from the members of that subregional forum to this review panel. And then if, if Westminster staff is the, is the nominee from Jefferson County, you'll have to tell Arapahoe County, right, Arapahoe, Adams County, that sorry, well, I know we Arapahoe can't. wants to adopt we, this, we, that's okay. We, we'll stick we, with that. We, we, my, my staff member can't be the representative from the Adams County subregional okay. forum. That's right? good. So. I want to make sure, Mr. Diane. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to try and add, I mean, I, I, I truly believe that the subregion should, uh, I, I think I articulated a staff member, but after hearing, maybe just uh, a person, uh, a subject matter expert, which could go beyond the staff, which to me, if that's the case, if we're opening it up to just non-staff as well, but appointed by the subregion, that may be, that may open the door to, um, to uh, reduce the level of uh, the, the handful of subject matter experts or eliminate because at, at some point in time we may get comfortable enough that each subregion then finds someone a subject matter expert that is not a staff that can provide different perspective because we're going to have staff at the TAC 
Uh, so to me, maybe maybe just sort of limiting it to a, to the sub region plus RTD plus CEDA plus Dr. Cog, but opening it up greater to um, to non staff as well. If the sub region wants to nominate someone that truly has that expertise, I'll I'll leave it to uh, Director Jones to maybe provide some thoughts on that. So here's where I think we're at on this one right now. One person from each subregion. If you're in multiple subregions, that same person cannot be the one representing more than one region. The cast of characters of the eight plus our three, RTD, Dr. Cog, CDOC, and up to, but no more than five <coughs> subject matter experts on any one area. Are we okay with that? I think I got everybody covered. Okay. And then after that, it goes to the TAC for recommendation. It goes to RTC for approval. Then it goes to Dr. Cog Board, which is us, for final approval. And if there's any disparity between RTC and Dr. Cog Board, it gets to go back until we get a resolution and a unanimous agreement. Everybody okay? Ms. Jones, I just wanted muddy to, the water. No, I didn't. I did, wanted to respond to Director Dyack's um, point, which is the the subregions. We're assuming that they're going to nominate a staff person to the review committee. He's suggesting if they wanted to, they could recommend a subject matter expert who's not actually on staff. I don't have any problem with that. I think it, it's a sub-regional decision. It, 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 the point is we want subject matter experts on the review panel. Yeah, and, and to your point, very valid with both of you, is that some municipalities may not have that staff person. And we know that's true in, in some cases. They use outside contractors for that. And whether or not they want to pay additional funds for another contractor to be at meetings, that's up to them. Mr. Partridge. So clarification for review panel, the max number would be 13 members? You got eight, three is 11, and five could be 16. Oh, with Dr. Cox. We got eight. It would be up to 16, depending on how many, because we said no more than five. Doesn't mean you have to have five. So you could have the odd number that you're talking about with Ms. Christman, but right now you could have up to 16. And that's what I'm wondering do we want to have the subregions possibly outnumbered? That's what I was referring to earlier. Maybe keep it so that it's a total of seven outside entities and eight, no more than seven outside entities and eight subregion. So that's what I was wondering. What would be the max number on the review panel? So then it's it's no more than four outside because you'd have Dr. Cog yeah. seat out RTD. So yeah. I'm I'm fine with that. I okay. quite frankly I think, you know. Three is probably plenty from outside. So, so can I ask Cog? Go ahead. Clarifying question. Is Dr. Cog's role in the review panel going to be one of making, uh, participating in the recommendations or more of a facilitating <laughs> role? You know, if I may. Um, yeah, I was thinking about that myself. Um, and it's a good question because we would already have provided our recommendation. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is whether it was necessary for us to vote on any change. Um, I guess I'd throw that back at you, what your desire would be for us to do. But I mean, we wouldn't have a problem with voting, I guess. I wouldn't have a problem with it either, but I wonder if maybe it's cleaner to keep Dr. Cog's role in the scoring section and then in the recommendations to keep to a facilitation role. And I like that. Okay, so then that gives you 15. Yeah. Okay, is everybody all right? Last opportunity. Ms. Stolzman. Uh, early on, uh, Director Brockett had talked about that the staff would come back at the next meeting with these alternate members as recommendations. So we don't have to get to 15 if, that's, if there's no need. It's just that if there are identified people, the staff will bring those forward and we'll discuss them next time. But if it's, if it's fewer than that, that's acceptable. Yeah. Thank you. You just couldn't be any less than 11. Okay. Thank you, very, thank you all very much. It was a helpful conversation for us. All right. I hate to break up the party, but as soon as Mr. Graves is done, we'll be adjourned.
I'm not going to stand between you and a party, Mr. Chairman. I certainly won't do not that. Not a party, a dinner for those who have to stay. Now that we've wrapped that up, just a, a couple closing thoughts here. I think it would be great now that we've sort of finalized the diagram to have staff do the full visio with the decision boxes. So if, for example, something is not approved by RTC, then what is the out? I think it would be great to, important to see that. It, it also dawned on me while we were going through this for the, the regional bucket that clearly across our subregions, each of us is going through this process internally with staff or our regional partners. And so once we finalize by subregion, I think we should bring all of those models before the full body for a bit of an education session and also to learn from one another. And there may, frankly, also be some smoothing that we do at the subregional level that will lessen the burden on RTD and CDOT and other regional partners who are submitting requests to each of the subregions in addition to the regional pot. So just a, an idea for consideration. I'd like you to really consider adding two RTD people to every committee. Since they're not here to defend themselves, we'll make a decision by them not being here. They're going to have to double their staff, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. Well, they're going to try to do that anyway. But then we'd have the staff requirements for CDOT because they're present. And, sorry, Doug, go ahead. Got one, one last thing before you all leave. Um, don't forget award celebration, uh, April 25th. Please register. If uh, you're having problems, please contact myself or Connie. And I know there was a few people have some problems with the uh, with the discount code or what have you. So please uh, please do that. There's still sponsorship opportunities if you're interested. Um, by table. Bye. <laughs> says by table. Yeah, so, um, no, so, so please, everybody sign up. We, we got a pretty good crew so far. We're, we're, uh, we're hoping to make this bigger and better than last year. Thank we, you all. We'd be very disappointed if every member of the Dr. Cog board is not present at the gala. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somebody keeps picking on Dyack about how many tables he's buying. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, travel safe going home. Those of you in the P&E committee, we have a short break, and then we'll be a, joining the Mr. Dyack in the chair up there. Next time we have the sub-regional meeting, right? Before the next.
I think it's the 17th, right? And the next one of these is whatever that is. All right. I'll see you at one and two. I'll either see you here. I'll either see you here or there next. So that'll be fun. But now she. Very good. Yes. All right. Cool. Safe travels. Ooh, I need it. Where did I bring it go? Okay. Yeah, do you need a party? Are you good? I got one. Thanks, right? 